The Memphis Grizzlies have been one of the league's great surprises this season, going from a play-in team last year with a lot of young promising pieces, to this year taking the leap from fighting on the edge of the standings to now solidly contending for a top four seed in the Western Conference. And while you're probably well aware of the Grizzlies' main pieces with Ja Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr. and supporting guys like Dylan Brooks, Steven Adams, and DeAnthony Melton. There's one player that's been having a monster season that if you're not already, you probably need to start paying attention to. And that's Desmond Bain. Bain has been absolutely lighting it up this season, and he's a large part of why the Grizzlies were able to have so much success, even when Ja Morant was out for an extended stretch of games with injuries and COVID. Last night, he dropped his career-high 32 points in an absolutely wild win against the higher-seeded Phoenix Suns. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what makes Desmond Bain so great and why I think he's the NBA's next great shooter. We're going to be covering a lot in this video, so be sure to stick around until the end and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the video. Let's get right into it. In order to understand how Bain got to where he is, it's important to understand where he came from. How does a 6'6 shooting guard that averaged 16 points per game in college while shooting almost 45% from three end up going with the 30th overall pick? That almost seems like a no-brainer for any general manager. Well, there were actually quite a lot of concerns about Bain heading into the draft albeit a good amount of them were pretty unwarranted. You see, Desmond Bain has a 6'4 wingspan, which made him one of the few players at that level of basketball to have a wingspan that is shorter than their height. While Bain did have so many positives on the offensive side of the ball, scouts had some really harsh reservations about his ability in the NBA due to the fact that they believed this short wingspan was going to hinder him defensively. So he ultimately would get drafted with the 30th overall pick by the Boston Celtics before his draft rights were traded to the Memphis Grizzlies in exchange for two second round picks. One funny thing that I want to point out here is that the Boston Celtics traded away Desmond Bain's draft rights to offload Enos Cantor's contract. Fast forward to now and Desmond Bain looks like a star and the Celtics once again have Enos Cantor on their roster. Now, Bain's rookie year was by no means a bad season and he was actually one of the better rookies of his class. He was the only rookie to play 1,000 or more minutes in the 2020 season and shoot over 43% from beyond the arc, while also averaging a respectable 9.2 points per game in his first year. However, the expectations for a lot of people with Bain remained relatively low. He was seen more as a role player, primarily to be relegated to catch and shoot scoring and occasionally using that bigger frame to get into the lane for a bucket. But he has been able to do so much more than that. This year, we've seen Desmond Bain turn into legitimately one of the best shooters in all of basketball. He's been so impressive that despite being 16th in three-point attempts so far this season, he's fourth in three-pointers made with 100 three-pointers made on 234 total attempts. He's shooting above 40% from three on catch and shoot threes, above the break threes, corner threes, and pull up threes. All of this has his scoring coming in at 17.2 points per game. But what's really interesting and far more indicative of what's impressed me so far is how he was able to step up in the absence of Ja Morant. He scored more than 20 points per game in six out of the 12 games that he played without Ja Morant this year. And he did it while shooting an absolutely absurd 59.2 true shot percentage. He was absolutely on fire during this stretch of games. The thing that impressed me the most is the fact that he was doing more than just hitting catch and shoot shots or hitting wide open layups. He was coming off of screens, he was attacking the rim, hitting pull up mid range jumpers. He literally looked like a completely different player. Him and Jaron Jackson Jr. worked extremely well together during their win streak and they have this really nice dribble handoff that they like to run where Bain gets him the ball towards the top of the key and Bain cuts above the break and Jaron shovels it off to him and immediately screens Bain's defender for an easy three point look. 
Like I mentioned earlier, he's developed some pretty solid shot creation ability, and I honestly think that his shorter wingspan might actually be beneficial to him as far as how tight his handle has seemingly looked this year. He's going as far as hitting 47% of his pull-up two-pointers and 40% of his pull-up three-pointers. And he's also shooting 53% from the field when he takes seven or more dribbles. So truly, it's not just his three-point shooting off the catch that's making him have such a great season. He's getting it done from legitimately all areas of the floor. He's shooting 65% at the rim, 45% in the mid-range, and he's efficient from all over the arc. This man is a walking hot zone. There aren't that many players in the NBA that can stay so efficient regardless of where they are on the floor. Now, we've talked about his scoring, but we cannot talk about Desmond Bain without talking about how great he's been on the defensive end this year. At a glance, he's only averaging a steal per game, but his defensive impact has been a lot more than that. He's been a very good on-ball defender this year. We're seeing some really improved lateral quickness, and there's no question that he gives 100% effort on defense at pretty much all times, which really is about all you can ask for for any defender. Considering this is an area of the game that scouts were primarily concerned he wouldn't be able to operate effectively in, it's really encouraging to see that he's taken the defensive jump that he has. So all of this being taken into consideration, what is the expectation for Desmond Bain in terms of his career? Well, I truly do think that Desmond Bain has the potential to be one of the greatest shooters of his generation. He's currently third for fastest to reach 200 three-pointers made in his career, coming in at only 103 games to reach that benchmark. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that he could potentially develop into an all-star caliber player. The name of the game for him is going to be consistency. If he continues to improve as a shot creator, as well as improving on the defensive end, I think he can easily reach 20 points per game. Right now, he's only taking 6.7 threes per game. If he was allowed to take 8 or 9 threes per game and his three-point shooting was able to maintain its current efficiency, he would start to get into some impressive numbers in the scoring column. If he stays on the pace that he's at and barring any major injuries, he's going to climb the three-point rankings and could arguably wind up being regarded as one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time when it's all said and done. I'm not saying he's going to be considered number one or even top five, but it's entirely possible that by the time he hangs it up, he could be pretty high on that list. But I want to know, what do you think Desmond Bain's ceiling is? Let me know in the comments below. By the way, if you guys are new to the channel, I'm posting NBA content all the time, and we are almost to 4,000 subscribers, so why not hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video? As always, be sure to hit that like button because that's the number one way to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope everyone had a great holiday, and I'll see you all in the new year.